launched over a thousand companies for you know startups, and um, you've probably heard of, of a lot of them. And um, how many exits have you had? You had. Uh, personally, I've started uh, several companies and exited three, and I still have to work for a living. Wow. <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Solis, thank you first off for being here. Well, thank you. Hey, guys, so one of the things that uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I have nothing to promote. I'm here to just help any founder or any entrepreneur better understand how to make their startup successful. Uh, I'm also here to drink champagne because Frank knows that that's my favorite drink. It's so, the lure. So please... Have some questions. I'm going to be around. I, I, I'm i legitimately here to help you. Yes. So, actually, I just want to start off a little bit more about your backstory and, and what you've been up to. I mean, you basically have, have built a, a huge brand for yourself, and but aside from that, you've learned a, a lot along the way with the different companies you mentioned. So, let's talk a little bit about how you got started in, in startup. And we, we met, how, how did we meet? Like, we met years ago. <laughs> uh, with like 15 years yeah, it's ago. It's been a long time. <laughs> It's been a long time, but you were you were basically starting and hustling companies, getting them going, getting them, building up brands basically, and getting them out there. Yeah. What are some tips maybe that people can learn from that, like your experiences in, in, in launching companies? You know, so it, I've I've started launching companies back in '97, and one of the things that I found that's still common today with with founders and companies is that we get caught up in the company mode, and that mm -hmm. the lifestyle of being an entrepreneur, the lifestyle of hustling is not always the best focus. The best focus is building a business and building a market and building a community around that company. And it's hard work, but at the same time, it's literally you're building a business. And, and I found then, and I still find today, that there's also an allure of being part of that startup culture that can sometimes be distracting. Right. Yeah, so and that, that you, you're in the valley, you're in Silicon Valley, and do you find that that's kind of a, a more of a, a valley thing where it's like everyone wants to be in a company or you see that everywhere? Okay, so some of the backstory for those who care or don't care. I mean, uh, the, the reason that there are, the reason that why there are startup hotspots in Seattle, Austin, New York, Los Angeles is because I took what was in Silicon Valley and, and started to invest in all of these pockets of where I saw great entrepreneurs doing cool things. Right. It, it, it is, a, it is, Silicon Valley is a mess. <laughs> I mean, it you, is, heard, you heard it here <laughs> first. Silicon Valley is a mess. It, it, it is, uh, we, I call it the Hollywood Homes Tour. Now we have companies that are coming out from all over the world and they're trying, oh, we have to go meet with Google and we have to meet with Facebook because there's, like, w there's just some allure of the, the water in Silicon Valley. Right. But, yeah. But like you have to be there. But the reality is, you don't have to be there. I've been in, I've I've been investing in in Singapore and Hong Kong and looking at, at at hot hot spots all around the world. It's just you have to have a a desire to solve problems right. that other people cannot see. And this is this is something where I, I if I could give you any advice, mm -hmm. it would be what is the problem you're trying to solve and how do we attach dollars and market creation mm. around that and we don't we don't spend enough time doing that so solve actual problems <laughs> <laughs> or create opportunities or, or so, the other way so, around, yeah. so let's talk about that really quick you know yeah. one of the things that I, I find with startups is everybody feels like they're going to disrupt yes like or they're going to feel like they're going to innovate mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that a lot of companies actually haven't figured out is the, the distinction between innovation and iteration right so we see a lot of companies doing the same things better than the companies before them. That's mm -hmm. iteration, that's not innovation. Mm -hmm. Innovation is cre doing new things that creates new value. Mm -hmm. And why is that important? Because innovation has the best exits. Right. Right? And then so it's that, about exits for people, and that's why they're... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, then, and then that leads to disruption, right. because disruption is doing new things that makes the old things obsolete. And the reason why I had to classify them separately is mm. because I know how much I will get on an ROI right. between those things. Right. That makes sense. All right. So we've got, we've got a bunch of startup founders that are in the audience here. How many startup founders are still standing? And, and, okay. There you go. All right. All three of you. So all three. three. Yes, all right three on. startup founders. Um, there's a bunch of entrepreneurs as well. How many people are, are entrepreneurs here? There you go. Okay. Everyone. <laughs> all right. So... For all those folks that have, you know are starting and running companies, I want you to share some like I mean, you've got a lot of, of, of knowledge and, and both 
you know, positive and ne negative experiences launching companies. What are some of the things that, like, you know, the pieces of knowledge of you, you'd give these companies? Like, if they're trying to start up anywhere, like, what, what's you know, the main uh, thing? The, the, the main thing, and I, this might sound corny, yeah. and it's amazing, too, because I'm also getting a massage. There's some bass going on. Yeah. It's no, I feel like it's, a, it's like our chairs are vibrating. Yeah, they are chairs. vibrating. Does everyone feel that? Yeah, okay. It's, it's kind of nice. I just actually don't want to leave. Yeah, right? And hopefully it doesn't stop. And if so, tell me where to put the quarters. <laughs> but culture is the most important part of any startup. And I don't mean having a startup culture. Right. I mean having a culture of leadership and vision and direction. And this is why, listen, uh, one, one of the hardest things to do when you're growing a startup is to have to replace the founder with the CEO or a COO. Uh, when, be, because there's no skill set in getting that company to the next level. The startup culture thing is cool. Trust me, I've had plenty of startups. But at the same time, though, man, we are building a business, and you can't do it fast enough. Right. And, and, and one of the things that Frank didn't tell you is that I'm also a digital anthropologist. So I study how people are changing because of all of the technology that exists right. around us. And I can't tell you how fast it's accelerating. So whatever your idea is, it is only good enough for the next two to three years, right? And so the value proposition has to continue to evolve based on how society is evolving. And I call that digital Darwinism. Technology evolves, society evolves. So culture, adaptability, and what you set out to do has to continue to evolve because how you define value and how whoever your user is that defines value are different things. And it's continuing evolving. And the last thing that I'll say mm -hmm. is I can't emphasize enough about the evolution of user experience and design and interface design mm -hmm. because what you set out to create today is not what's going to be relevant, even right, how yeah. we interact with it in two to three years. And so as a founder, as an entrepreneur, when you're building your companies, you have to plan for obsolescence. You have to plan that you are going to be obsolete. Right. And you have to have a program that tr you, tr you have to try to put yourself out of business mm -hmm. in cycles. And I actually look at those cycles as in 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I actually would love for you to consider having a, or adopting a tagline like, you can't disrupt if you don't disrupt yourself can't disrupt if you don't disrupt yourself. That's great. I love that. Okay, I'm going to actually go over here to the right here. You guys are having a good time. How many people, do you guys have questions for Mr. Solis? Be thinking about it, because we're going to open it up here in a second. You're going to get your questions. I, I'm going to give, I'm going to give Mick the first question. Yep. Uh, uh, startup entrepreneurs normally drown in opportunities rather than starve. How do um, early stage entrepreneurs get the discipline to focus on a small set of things? So that, by the way, is a planted question. I've known Mick. How many, how many years, Mick? Yeah, since I was 10. Thank you. Thank you for that. We used to ride big wheels together. Uh, the, the, the hardest part about maintaining focus as, as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is understanding that, okay, we, we're all amongst friends here, right? Yeah, of course, yes. So one of the things that I've really admired about Mark Zuckerberg for a very long time was that he stayed insanely focused on user experience. And he understood that what user experience was in 2006 is not what user experience is in 2017. Yep. He's been absolutely relentless in innovating on, I mean, Facebook for all intents and purposes fucked our election last year. But <laughs> he is now thinking about virtual reality. He's thinking about communications and he's using this as this way of helping the company continue to evolve to be relevant in a society that doesn't necessarily know what it wants, but once it has it, it can't live without it. That, that's focus, right? It's a bigger mission. It's a bigger purpose. A lot of us set out to, to code. A lot of us set out right. to create a product or create an app and we want it to be the best downloaded app that there is, or we want to build the best site, or we want to build a, a, the best services platform, that's all great, but it's only relevant for a finite amount of time, and you always have to invest in yourself of what's next, and that's the focus. And so Mark Zuckerberg famously said when they went public, and when that stock started to drop right when they went public, I was, I was interviewed on TV, and they said, so how do you feel about Facebook failing now that they're a public company? I said, they are not failing. They are just having to explain to Wall Street what it is. And Mark Zuckerberg shortly thereafter said, fuck Wall Street, 
As long as I invest in the user experience, shareholders will get value. I think it's super important. I mean, user experience is, is so important. I think people forget that. So yeah, you're definitely hearing some claps here in the audience. Um, so you, you mentioned that, kind of explaining to Wall Street what's going on. We had a bunch of companies here pitching different ideas. There's, there's some AI companies. There were uh, different types of technologies and trends that are kind of the next big things. You've seen a lot of that. You're watching that constantly. For you, I want to I want to just pick your brain here. What do you see as the future? What do you see, what's the next thing that you're excited about? Uh, look, 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 look. I, so I, I publish this thing called the Wheel of Disruption. And it looks at all of the technologies that are disruptive. Right. And by disruptive, I mean actually making things. old things obsolete, right? Right, right. I no longer can keep up with that graphic because of... So much, yeah. There's so much. Yeah. And so what I'm now trying to do is understand the impact over time. So like right. blockchain. Blockchain is going... Right. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm older than I look. You it's look the great. oil of the land, champagne. You However, you know, the concept of a bank right. is gone. Right. I mean, we are watching that die right now. Right. And so I'm looking at all of these technologies. The thing is, is this, is that as an entrepreneur, you can't just invent or create something. Mm -hmm. You actually have to look at what is the future of everything. So I use this example of, um, you know, you guys are all on the front line of innovation. And yet, you know, the one thing we all probably have in common is that we all have remote controls for our television at home. Yep. And that is the worst the worst thing ever. No, no one's even come up with a better solution for and that. And remote control. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, on average, today, a remote control has 70 buttons on it. <laughs> 70. That's and and, and this, is, this is, I study this kind of shit because <laughs> I, I'm trying to make sense of iteration versus innovation. Yep. So the advice I have for you is this. If you've ever used, I know you've used PowerPoint because you, sometimes you have to pitch to investors. Yep. There's a little save icon at the top of PowerPoint. Right. So also Word and Excel. Some of you think it's a save icon and some of you know it's a three and a half inch floppy disk. <laughs> we don't challenge our own conventions. We don't challenge enough of our own environments to actually understand what's possible with your entrepreneurial minds. Right. There's, you have the ability to question and change everything. And, yeah. and this, this is hard. There's, so there's, a, there's an author who's no longer with us. His name is David Foster Wallace. Mm -hmm. And he gave a commencement speech where he talked about these, two f these fish swimming in a fishbowl. And trust me, this has relevance. <laughs> He said, you know, one day these fish were swimming by and some other fish were coming by and they said, hey guys, how's the water? <laughs> and the fish looked at each other and said, water? What's he talking about? Because we take for granted all of the things that we, we have and what we do. And when we invent, yeah. we invent based on this paradigm of what is. This is like these legacy perspectives. And so basically what I want to just tell you is as a startup, as an entrepreneur, your, your imagination, your creativity is not even, you're just scratching the surface. Right. And so if you could, if you could really think about the problems of tomorrow, mm -hmm. for example, we have this president in the office who's talking about bringing jobs back. Cool. Right. We're not talking, yeah. How about AI? And how about the fact that the next industrial revolution is going to take white collar jobs. Right. Right. So where is the solution for protecting people in 10 years? What is the solution that gets people to be relevant over time? Mm -hmm. the, the opportunity that we all have in terms of startups and investments is incredible, which right. is why mm -hmm. I am now shifting my focus from Silicon Valley to DC. Oh, interesting. Okay, talk, let's talk about that a little bit more. You, you're basically looking at those problems and saying, I can, I can help. I, I'm tired of complaining about what's in the White House, and I'm going to do something about it. That, all right, let's hear, let's hear it for Brian. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so <laughs> they, they got a lot of good feedback here. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so you... You're, I mean, you're constantly looking at that. You're looking at, looking at back at, at problems that are happening in D.C. and trying to solve that. But let's talk a little bit more about kind of your, your things you've been doing over the last 10 years. Um, you've been talking to a lot of brands and helping, you know, helping connect them 
um, you know, change the in, change them internally, right? Let's yeah. let's talk about some of that work. It's been really interesting. I'm sure you've seen a ton of of kind of the guts of organizations and how that what, how they're how they're going and what you're trying to lead them in a new direction. But a lot of that stuff is coming from startups that are you know the innovations are coming out of startups, right? So let's talk about how you're like. What's the most interesting thing you've seen in an organization that you're like, wow, that's kind of effed yeah. up, and this is what they should be doing? All right, so one of the things that I've studied quite a bit is also how big companies are investing in innovation centers around the world, yeah. and how they're also partnering with startups and yeah. or, or entrepreneurs as a way of sort of trying to compete for relevance. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the greatest opportunities that you all have is to try to plug in into these ecosystems. So you can just Google my name, Brian Solis, and Innovation Centers, and you can download the re reports for free. Yep. But look at where all of those centers are, and I also talk about what are the hottest technologies in those areas. And, and, and you can see all the brands who are investing in these areas. Right. And I, I, I promise you it's easy biz dev, right? It's, an, it's a very easy way to bring immediate revenue into your company. Mm -hmm. This is important because they're so desperate. <laughs> they are so desperate. And the reason why they can't do this internally or by themselves is because the culture of a big company is not designed to do that. Mm -hmm. Big companies have management infrastructures that are 50, 60 years old. They're still right. operated on technology that was invented before the internet. Right. Their mindsets are legacy-based. People are, have protectionism and politics and, and, and egos that don't allow them to actually grow, so they have to spin these things out right. in order to get things done. And mm -hmm. they have to operate independently in order to try to at least prove successful pilots. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that there's so much money and so much support mm -hmm. in, these, in these areas. In fact, I think in one of the reports, I give you everybody's name and everybody's company and where they are. So wow. you just use it as, as uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross for those geeks out there. Those are, those are, your, uh, those are your leads. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, so basically, I mean, those are, could be the first customers for some of these early stage companies, right? Like going after those bigger partners that could actually help them. It could be their... Could be the difference between more funding and a, and a bigger, bigger gig, right? I'm always about uh, valuation, right? Yeah. And so there's the valuation of. I mean, look. So I think we could all agree that some of the companies out there have bullshit valuations, <laughs> but but when you can build valuations from a meaningful standpoint, right? Right. Because you have interest. You because have you have companies. You have partners, yeah. yeah. I mean that that's legitimate. That's yeah. legitimate. Whether you exit or not, that's legitimate. Right. And that's all I'm asking you to do is just build a business. All right. So we're here at, at South by Southwest. You've been coming here for how long? 10, 15 years? Uh, how, 11 or 12. 11 years. Um, this has been kind of an interesting South by with the, with the rain and whatnot. What's, what, is, what have you been up to? What have you, what have you seen so far that's just been like, oh, that's, that's interesting? Uh, this is the second... South by where there hasn't been a breakout. That's app. what I'm wondering. Have you seen yeah, it? There yeah. has not been a breakout app. Oh. I'll tell you what's been breakout, and then and then um, I'm going to go back and get a refill of yeah, champagne. Yeah, like so, good, yeah. the, on Monday there's an actathon. A what? Actathon. It's hosted oh. by Steve Rosenbaum. He's trying to bring people together to figure out how they're going to solve how they get Trump out of the office. Really. Then there's tech after Trump that's happening in a few days. Saw that, yeah. So we're seeing the breakout apps are actually breakout. I call it BYOM, bring your own mind, right? Like I think that's the breakout is ourselves because we, 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 you have to innovate, mm -hmm. of course. That's why we're all here. But at the same time, as a community, we also have to fix yeah. this. This is this is. This needs help. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm. I, I'm not on the left. I'm not on the right. I'm yeah. pro human beings, and innovation is a real big part yeah. of our future. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, one, one more question, and then we can get you a refill. Um, unless you want to ask, do I open it up. We can do that too. But I, I had a. You know, we're here in Austin. The, the theme here is uh, keeping it weird. Um, <laughs> you see a lot of cu culture, you know, corporate startup uh, all over the board. There, I wanted to find out, like, how do you how do you keep it weird? Personally? Dude, I, I keep it weird because I, look, I, I actually am weird. I think we're all <laughs> weird in our own regards. That's why we start companies and do cool shit. Yeah. I, I just um, it just took me a long time to figure out that it was okay to be weird. Right. Uh, and so I started I started my first company 
later later in my career, uh, yeah. and it was because I was I felt like you were supposed to follow the rules, and you, mm -hmm. this is the way it's always been done. Mm -hmm. Every every aspect of your life was pre-programmed based on your parents and their parents. Right. Like get married, buy a house, go to go to university. Well, I, I didn't finish college. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. I couldn't mm -hmm. keep a job longer than you know a, a year or eighteen months. I was really sick and tired of offering ideas and being put back in my place. Mm -hmm. And so I, I keep it weird by fucking it, keeping it real. I, and I'm not going to stop doing that. All right. I, I like it. Well, do we want to open it up? What do you want to do? Hey, so if you guys have questions for me, I'm going to be in that back room. Come yeah, and see that me. That sounds like a great way to do it. Thank, Thank you, everybody. very much for being here. Thank you, Brian Solis, for coming out. Let's get drinks.